Hello, stampers and fellow paper crafters. It's Cindy Lynn with my inky fingers. Thank you so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel and blog. I hope this video finds you safe and happy and crafting lots of cards. Today's card, we're going to make that cool flower. Now, isn't that the coolest flower you ever did see? We're going to use Stampin' Blends to make that. Now, I'm just creating a swatch on craft plastic to put all of my Stampin' Blends on. And I'll go through all the supplies I'm, I'm using as we go along. But because I use craft plastic the most, I'm using craft plastic for my swatch. And I used an EK Success photo marker. I don't even think you can get them anymore, but I use that because it's the only marker I have right now that won't bleed. So I'm going to go through and swatch all of this out so that I see what the actual colors look like when combined with alcohol. And I'll put a time up right here so that you know where you can skip to if you want to just see how I made the card and you don't want to see the swatching. So to make my swatch, I did pull out my T-square ruler so that I could always have a straight line to uh, right on with my little marker and my penmanship is so so bad so don't don't look at my penmanship but and I used um, the grid paper and I made some little ticks there on the left hand side so that I could gauge about one inch for the actual uh, circles that I drew with the Stampin' Blends and then about another quarter inch so that it, they didn't bleed into where my um, marker was. Now this marker won't bleed, which is really nice, but if you do have one that might bleed, then you may want to just be careful of that. Now I felt that that little circle was too high so I used my alcohol and I just put it over top and I completely wiped it off and that's the beauty about the craft paper is all you have to do is douse it with some alcohol, use a clean rag or tissue and then you can wipe off all of the ink that you've got on your craft plastic and then you're left with a white sheet and you can start all over again. So here I'm just pointing out some of the colors that come out darker and you'll notice when you're swatching if you don't get little lines um, in your circle as you're drawing it and it's really smooth and dark chances are that's going to stain most of your mediums like especially your poster paper that I showed you in one of the previous videos. It's not so difficult on craft paper but the darker ones that I am going to point out as I go along do tend to be a little harder to work with so until you've practiced a lot and you have a little bit of experience with using alcohol markers on your your craft medium the plastic or a poster board or you pour whatever it is that you're doing um, you'll find that they, they tend to be a little bit tricky but the more that you practice the easier they are now I'm going to fast forward this up quite a bit and I'm just going to show you each of the colors so that one there is the dark clover call me clover and that one that one definitely is an issue um, on most mediums and then that other green there is the dark mossy meadow so all I did was just kind of put the circle and then one little drop of the alcohol because I wanted to see what the dark looked like and what the lighter one looked like. And I forgot to do a row, so I'm going to go back and take care of that now. So now that I've got that all done, I like to, I swatch everything, 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 everything. Any color that I've got in my studio is swatched. So I like to keep them in um, page protectors. And most of the mediums that I use quite frequently I have right on my craft table, so I'm able to pull those out. You're going to see those in a minute. I'm just making sure everything's dry before I put it away. So there's my page protector, and I've got a whole bunch of different things here. And I've got my, uh, I'm trying to learn how to do brush stroking. So I've got that one there in the, in the, in the page protector as a reference so that I can kind of look at the letters and how I'm supposed to draw them and <laughs> it's a work in progress. I'm not very good at it. Now this here plastic, um, the alcohol markers, the Stampin' Write markers will stain it. I do, I did go out and buy a tile, which I like a lot better. And I put some, um, that, uh, cling, uh, what do you call it? That sticky cling, cling saran wrap stuff. Press and seal. I had a moment there. I literally had to like stop talking and go look in my drawer. So what I'm going to do here for this flower is I'm going to start out with the basic black. I'm also going to use the light Highland Heather, the dark balmy blue, and the light Knight of Navy. But I wanted to start with the black because when you're doing this, the black will blend in with your other colors 
and create that natural shadow for you. And I just find that that little bit of black is it, it's just the perfect touch to this flower. You don't have to worry about a lot of your shading and whatnot. So I'm going to leave this at about 200 speed for now while I jibber jabber talking about what I'm doing here. And then I will speed it up quite a bit just to save time. So I am using that little blower tool that I got there off Amazon. It's made for cameras and little things like that, but I find that it's perfect. It fits in my hand perfectly. It comes in a pack of three. I'll be sure to link those below for you. So as you can see, I'm using the um, dark night or the light night of navy there in the, or did I use the dark? I'm such a dingbat sometimes I did use the dark so as you can see when I use the alcohol and I blow that off it does leave quite a predominant little circle there now you'll notice over time it will go away the more alcohol that I'm using and the more that I work it but the key here with the blower is on a scratch piece of paper, um, like your, your poster board, that's where you should be practicing anyhow if you haven't quite got the technique down. So on your poster board, practice pressing that and pressing it really close to your work and hard and you'll notice you get kind of like a fireworks effect and you can see that I just kind of pump it, right? And I'm, I'm about an inch away because I don't want to create fireworks. I want to create petals. So I'm just going in each time and I'm adding a little bit more ink and I'm just kind of like, you know, pressing on it and pumping it re re relatively quickly, one after the other, just until I get my, my technique down. Now, the, this is the base of your flower and it really doesn't have to be perfect. And if you have a spot like that one there, you notice it was kind of dark. I went in and I did another couple pumps over there with some more alcohol and some ink and it kind of covers up what was there before. So you're just, you're just going to layer. You're going to keep applying your marker one layer after the other. So now I've got my darkest one down. I'm going to come in with the, um, dark balmy blue. Now here's a little tip. <laughs> this is kind of a neat trick. A lighter Stampin' Blends marker will for some reason remove that darker Stampin' Blends marker. Now don't get too stressed over using your markers here because if you're using a lighter marker over a darker marker you can just put a piece of scratch paper next to you and when you're done just kind of um, rub your marker back and forth on that scratch piece of paper and any dark marker will definitely come off. You're not going to ruin your markers. I just got all my markers in November. I got the whole set. Trust me, I don't want to do anything to ruin them. These are like my little prize possession, my Stampin' Up! prize possession, right? So I definitely wouldn't steer you in the wrong direction and have you do something that you're going to that's going to ruin them. So I'm just going to go back and forth with different colors here. And this is where I'm going to speed it up a little bit just to save you guys some time. And you can see when I'm applying my ink, I'm not doing it directly in the center anymore. I'm kind of doing it a little bit away from the center because I want those petals to to reach out a little bit further, right? So I want a nice clean center in this. Now, if you don't want that effect, play around with it and, and try putting your little circles of ink in the middle or out a little bit further towards the edge like I've done. But it's a, it's a labor of love, this is for sure. It's a work in progress. But the end result is, I mean, it's just stunning. I, This is my third attempt at doing a flower. I've got one on the back of this paper, actually. And I don't know what I was thinking. I should have just wiped it all off, and I didn't. But I flipped it over because I just really wasn't that satisfied with how, how it was turning out. But I really haven't been making these for very long. So I can't really give you all of the expert advice on using alcohol markers to paint. And I guess that's what they call it. They call these paintings. So I'm just going to tell you what I've done. So, you know, if you've got some tips and tricks too, definitely let me know in the comments below because I'm still learning as well, right? So the idea here is, again, to just be laying down your little circles, putting a little bit of alcohol. The more alcohol you put, the further your petals are going to push out too. So it's better to start with a little alcohol because you can always go in and add more color and then put some more alcohol. And I am now using 99% isopropanol alcohol. 
um, I had to get a special order and I was very fortunate and I got four liters of it. So um, nevertheless, I, I hate to make anybody jealous. Sorry if you're having a hard time getting alcohol. But now what I want to do is I want those petals to kind of start blooming and being a little thicker. I didn't want so much of the stringy, fireworky type looks. And it's just practice. I mean, the more that you try to create them, the better that you're going to get at them. And I've got that big one there. So I'm going to go back after and put some more over that. And here's another tip. I try not to work close to the area I just completed. And if you watch here, you'll notice that I'll put a petal in and then I'll move my Lazy Susie a little bit and then put a petal in another area because I don't want the new petal with the alcohol to bleed into the one that I just laid down, right? So I'm just going to keep turning it. And another tip for you is if you really don't like a certain area, take a Q-tip with some alcohol and erase that little area and then just start again working that area with your your petals with putting a little bit of ink in and I've done that on so many different pieces so far I mean I've also learned that you can take um, your alcohol on your q-tip and uh, how do I explain it just kind of feather out soften up your edges this is especially helpful when you're doing abstracts or just little backgrounds. And I've got another um, video coming up soon. It's more bubble techniques and whatnot on a card. And I, I do believe I used my Q-tip to just kind of um, blend out some of my edges so they weren't so harsh there, right? So I've, I pretty much got the idea here for my flower. It's really taking shape. And I'm going back and forth with the colors, as you can see. So I'm using a little bit of blue. I'm using a little bit of purple. And where I want it to be a little darker, I'm just going to bring in that uh, night and navy. And I'm not going to go in with any more black. Um, I am going to finish the center off with the black. Now, just a heads up, this video isn't about making the actual card. So all I did was show you guys how I did the flower. Um, I'll just go over really quickly for the actual card. I used the silver metallic edge ribbon um, that I just got in my unboxing, if you watched that. And then I used the black organdy glittered ribbon. And I just kind of cut them, folded them in half, and then I tied some retired silver twine in a little bow just to kind of hold them there and I adhered them with a with a glue dot and then the sentiment I cut out the sentiment strip but then I kind of fussy cut around the word friendship and that was a labor of love too I had to use my um my trimmer and my scissors and then I just finished it all off with the woven threads sequence so I hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions about it definitely leave me a, a comment down below on my blog or on YouTube and I'll do my best to help you. If you make one of these, please, please, please join my Facebook group and upload it there because I would love to see it or even just link me somewhere on Instagram or here, what have you. I would love to see what you guys come up with. I also have a big giveaway that is launching this week. I'm not sure at the time of editing this video if it's up or not, but if you will follow my Facebook page, you will definitely see it if it is up. So thanks again for stopping by and until I see you again, take care and happy stamping.